Hello and welcome to the channel. I'm Dr Sarah Pugh and I'm going to start to release some sort of medium length videos, about 10 minutes or so, on different parts of presentations that I've done over the years because sometimes videos that are an hour or so can be quite overwhelming and then videos say that a one minute like a short or a TikTok can be too short. In today's video I'm going to go over some basics with hormone hierarchies and I'm going to touch on cortisol just to give people a flavour of what this hormone does and what they can do about it if there's a problem. Okay, so here we have a hormone hierarchy and what it's basically showing is that certain hormones have power over others and you'll see right at the top we've got oxytocin and leptin, so that would be a cuddle hormone and an appetite hormone because these particular hormones feed into lots of different pathways into the body and I'll come into these in other videos. And then right at the bottom we've got sex hormones, so that would be testosterone, progesterone, uh, and estrogen. So what it's basically saying is that it's say if you've got a problem with your testosterone or progesterone, you need to look higher up in the hierarchy to solve the problem. So for example, when there's insulin resistance, usually cortisol resistance and leptin resistance started before the insulin resistance. But today we're going to talk about cortisol briefly because cortisol is a uh, made in the same pathway as progesterone, testosterone and estrogen, it's made from pregnenolone and because it's that important that we die without it, our bodies are always going to preferentially make cortisol. So as I said, uh, cortisol is a hormone that we would die without and a lot of people think cortisol is just a stress hormone and it's this thing that causes belly fat but it actually feeds into a lot of other really important processes like the immune system, it's to do with fertility, bone metabolism and its main purpose is to mobilize fats and sugars under times of fight or flight but it also has anti-inflammatory properties so quite often the reason cortisol is high is because either the person's got an inflammation problem or there's a stress problem going on in the body so with cortisol there's a problem when there's either too much of it which would be high stress or not enough which would be adrenal fatigue or another way of putting that would be cortisol resistance as I said, cortisol is a stress hormone and it's not trying to do anything nasty like kill you. It's trying to help you under times of stress. So obviously if it's a daily life problem, you've got high cortisol, that's a different issue. We're talking about biological reasons of why cortisol can be high. So the first one is, say, if people are eating a lot of sugar and a lot of carbohydrates, this is causing insulin to shoot up and then that's going to cause the blood sugar to drop. So the cortisol is going to shoot up again in order to balance the blood sugar. So blood sugar roller coasters can cause cortisol problems. But the main problem is that I found with cortisol issues are when people have got broken or malfunctioning or out of sync body clocks. So that would be say from exposing themselves to too much blue light during the day, being on the computer or watching television in bed until 2 a.m. because cortisol and melatonin work together. And if you're not sleeping properly, and then you're exposing yourself to too much stresses or blue light during the day. Over time, you're going to cause a disruption in your body clock. And when your body clock's disrupted, your brain basically can't tell what time it is. So this in, in itself is inherently very stressful. So it's going to cause an increase in cortisol. I mentioned at the beginning that uh, there's a really important hormone called pregnenolone which has anti-aging properties and cortisol ultimately gets made from this. So if you do have a cortisol problem, you're going to notice things like issues with your progesterone, issues with your sleep and there are multiple ways to deal with a cortisol issue and over the years of looking at different supplements and things, yes ashwagandha and glycine can help in the short term but fundamentally you need to address the root cause and quite a lot of the time it is a body clock issue because every single person can do something about their body clock. You don't need to have a lot of money to be able to get up and see the sunrise, to avoid screens in the evening, to make sure that you get regular sunlight throughout the day to reset your body clock and ground. So that was just a very brief video introducing cortisol to you. The other way that cortisol is problematic is chronic high levels of cortisol are going to cause leaky gut. And then people spend a fortune on looking at pro probiotics, diets and things like that. Whereas actually the problem isn't to do with what you're eating. The problem is coming from your stress levels and your cortisol levels. I've mentioned the fact that 
a body clock out of sync can cause cortisol issues, but then so can things like heavy metals or residual uh, viral infections. But what I've found over the years is if the person is generally quite healthy and they have a good redox, they have good mitochondria, they're able to get rid of viruses and heavy metals themselves. So fundamentally, having a good body clock, having a good redox potential, having good mitochondria is going to help you naturally be able to overcome uh, some of these issues relating to cortisol. So I've only scratched the surface of the hormone. So if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to pop them uh, below and I'll get back to you or make another video to go deeper into the subject. Join me for the next video and I'll be talking about another one of the hormones in the hormone hierarchy.